So in order to solve part A, we're going to use one of the results from one of the examples in the book. So the example tells us that if we have a piece of current over here, the amount of magnetic field at this point contributed by this section over here is going to be given by this formula. So you see it's related to these two angles. And so this can actually help us find the amount of magnetic field at the center of this square. So you can imagine there is current going around the square and then you see that if you only consider one side of the square you see that this configuration resembles the one given in the example so we can actually use this result so we can use it on one side and then multiply by four because the amount of um, magnetic field con uh, contributed from these other three sides are going to be the same as this side because by symmetry so we can find the amount of magnetic field on one side and multiply by four. So the magnetic field is equal to this. So the distance from this point to the center, you know, uh, if you drop a perpendicular down, the distance is r. And then you see that uh, because this is a square, this angle is going to be pi over four. So it's 45 degrees, the same for this. And so if you apply this formula, you get sine pi over 4 minus sine negative pi over 4. So there's a negative inside the sine, and this is a consequence of the way you, uh, you derive this formula when you use calculus. So if you go back, uh, so, if you, so if you go to this side of the axis, you need to start using uh, negative angles. So it's a sine, so for the negative I can pull it out. So sine pi over 4, that's equal to the square root of 2. So I have two of these, so this whole thing is equal to square root of 2. And so, uh, I need to multiply this by 4, because there are four sides. And so you see that the amount of magnetic field at the center is given by this. So note that this is just a magnitude, this is not a vector, so it should be a vector, so I'm just giving the magnitude. So this is part A. So for part B, we need to consider an n-sided polygon. So we do the exact same thing, we chop it up into n different uh, slices of, of current, and then we just uh, apply the formula and then multiply by n. So the magnetic field is 4 pi r. So what should we sign? So what, what, is, what should we put here? So let's consider a slice of one of the sides of this n-sided polygon. So this is one of the n sides. So you know that this angle is going to be uh, 360 degrees divided by n, right? So if you drop a perpendicular down, you see that this has to be pi over n, and this has to be pi over n. So you see that you arrive at this expression. So the two negatives, they cancel out. So you get two of these sine pi over n's. <clears throat> and then you need to multiply the whole thing by n because we have n sides so the 2 cancels out so we get n mu i 2 pi r sine pi over n so this is the answer for part b and then for part c we need to consider the case when n tends to infinity so when n tends to infinity and in order to solve this, solve this limit, so sine pi over n, I'm going to invoke this result. So this is a famous limit that you've probably learned in calculus class, so I'm not going to prove this here. So just accept this, take this for granted for this video. So in evaluating this integral, instead of n, I'm going to use m. So m is going to be something that's defined as 1 over n. So when n tends to infinity, m is going to tend to 0. So this becomes m pi, and then the n up here becomes this. And so in order to use this result, I'm going to multiply pi to the denominator, and multiply pi over here. So you see that as m tends to 0, pi m must also tend to 0. And so when the thing inside the sign and then the denominator tend to zero at the same rate, it's going to be equal to one. So this whole thing here is going to be equal to one. 
and the pi is the cancel out. So the result is that the magnetic field is given by this. So this is the magnetic field at the center of a circle. And uh, so this is the result, uh, the answer for part C. And there's also an alternative method to solve this. So 2 pi r and the sine pi over n. So if you recall the small angle formula, when theta becomes really small, this is going to be approximately equal to pi. So when n is ten, uh, tends to infinity, pi over n is going to be really small, right? So this is going to be, going to be equal to this. So I'm just using the small angle formula. So the n is cancel out, the pi is cancel out. So you get back the same result. So this is the answer for pi.